Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use some of the maps on the Rural Opportunity Map website made by the Center on Rural Innovation. We're going to start with the Startup Scout map and let's pretend for the sake of this tutorial that we want to find the opportunity zones in Michigan with existing or growing tech sectors to try to surface areas where there may be startups prime for opportunity zone investments. So here we have the screen you start on. I clicked on Michigan here and I'm going to go to this tab where I have Michigan all loaded up. So what you first see is on the right uh, Michigan with the all the opportunity zones outlined and over here is a data dashboard and we the map starts you out in a particular location that is an opportunity zone as a baseline and what we, what we have here is a data dashboard that shows you a range of metrics for the state, for the country, and for the baseline area. So the baseline area of uh, Macasa County. Um, the first section is about uh, rural definitions. There's sections about broadband, various socioeconomic factors, and so on and so forth. And you can compare the baseline opportunity zone with the state and USA numbers. So what I've done here is use these metrics to filter to find opportunity zones where there is more likely than not to be a tech sector. So there are buttons here that allow you to find places uh, based on these various metrics. And so the first thing I did was I hit this similar button because I want to look at places that are rural. The baseline community is 100% is rural as per the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services definition. So I want to filter down to counties that are also rural by that definition. Down here, I wanted to uh, filter down to places that were uh, near to four-year institutions of higher education. And because the local baseline area was also uh, near near uh, near that, I could press similar again. Um, I wanted to look at only places with uh, higher patent activity. So uh, you can you can see here hovering over this little information panel what exactly this patent index means. And I clicked this button to look at places with a index score of 20 or higher. I also wanted to look at places with uh, with STEM degree creation, uh, 30 per 1,000 people or greater, so I click this button. As you can see, after filtering all of those, those filters are additive, there are 18 tracks in Michigan that match those four filters. So this has brought us down to 18 tracks that, are, with looking at these metrics, uh, seem to indicate a higher than likely uh, probability that there's an emerging tech sector there. Now we can keep adding filters and I'll show you how, how to do that. So for example, I want to if I want to reduce this to also add a filter about broadband access, I'm going to click here to only look at opportunity zones that have higher than 25 megabits per second upload speeds. So now we're down to six. So um, as you can see, uh, this is kind of the filtering function. Uh, you can look up here to the dashboard to see kind of what you're looking at. We're looking at the tract level geography because that's where opportunity zones are designated, but we could change this to look at the county level, census place level, which is essentially the town, uh, and the county subdivision level. We can look at different states, other states. We can go here to clear all, all our filters and start again to sort on, on different metrics, and we can change our rural definition here. Now, I'm going to move on to showing you the local leader action map to show you some other features we have. Um, here's the first screen for that and pretend that I entered in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. That brings us to the opening screen which is of showing you where Cape Girardeau is and enabling the state of Missouri. So I'm going to, because, because Cape Girardeau is right here on the border with Illinois, I'm going to add on Illinois so we can see what's going on across the river. And if you'll notice, um, as soon as this loads, um, Cape Girardeau was grayed out, which means that under the current definition of rural that we're using, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Studies, uh, Cape Girardeau doesn't count as rural. So I'm going to change that to look at the EDA 
oops, EDA definition, which removes the gray mask, meaning that Cape Girardeau is considered rural under that definition. So again, we have these similar filters that we can use to find similar communities uh, as per the last map. And I'm moving to this tab where I've uh, done that a little. And so what I did was I wanted to find communities that were, so I'm looking at county subdivisions here rather than tracks, which we looked at tracks the last time. I wanted to find communities that were similar in terms of population. So I hit the similar number here and that uh, created a boundary 5% more and 5% less than what the population of Cape Girardeau was. And then I added onto that a filter about have it, uh, median home values because I wanted to find communities that had similar median home values. And interestingly enough, those two filters together uh, showed us that there are three county subdivisions in our uh, focus area where those filters um, have led us to. So there are a few locations that are similar on those metrics. Um, so I clicked on Quincy Township, Illinois, because uh, that was one of the similar places and you can see a list of those down here at the bottom. You can also download all the data uh, for just these filtered communities here if you want to compare side by side. And interestingly, you can so you can you can see these columns here comparing the Cape Girardeau, which is our, what we first looked at with the comparison town, which is Quincy Township. And if you look all the way down at the bottom, we have a data set included from USA Spending about what awards those locations have received from government agencies. So we're, we're displaying five government agencies here. There are more agencies in the data that you can explore. But the kind of interesting thing to note is, um, for example, HUD gave Quincy Township almost $10 million more. And this is looking at the previous three years. So that's kind of interesting. Um, what we can do is, uh, well, first of all, you can actually include these in your filters. So you could, for example, look for places similar to Cape Girardeau that have gotten more money from HUD or that have gotten more money from HHS. But what I want to look at now is up here, these buttons uh, actually take you to spreadsheets from USA Spending again that list every of the government awards that those particular locations have received. So this is an interesting place to explore to see maybe what programs your community might be eligible for and understand why other communities have gotten more or less from various agencies than yours. And you can sort these spreadsheets based on the agency that gave the award, based on how much the award was, um, the total funding amount, based, uh, there's a little description over here, there's a lot you can do with this spreadsheet. And there's also a link, for example, if you say, oh, I want to understand more uh, about what this Department of Commerce uh, EDA grant was that they received, you can click on the link and that opens it up on the USA Spending website so you can learn more information about it. So the last thing I want to show you on this tab is that if you zoom in, you can see a host of point data assets. And... There's a little legend up here. If you click on that, you can see exactly what you're looking at. So this is, again, Cape Girardeau. And uh, what I think immediately when I see this is, wow, there are a lot of these national historic places in Cape Girardeau. Uh, and the story that tells me is that Cape Girardeau probably has a real sense of history and a real sense of place in their downtown here. And uh, you can you know, zoom in and out. You can hit advanced options here and only select certain uh, point assets that you want to display, turn them on and off, for example, and uh, you kind of craft a, a narrative or a view by doing that. Um, here you can toggle whether you're showing the point data or polygon data based on the metrics over here on the left, and the last thing you can do here is easily take a screenshot of whatever you're looking at to be able to share it. So that concludes uh, this quick tutorial. Uh, happy mapping and let us know uh, what you think. Thank you.